Welcome to the Deep Tech Nation Forum, the platform for interviews with key people of the Swiss technology ecosystem. Listen in and get to know their personal stories, experience and vision for the Switzerland of tomorrow. So, welcome. I have the pleasure and the chance to be here in Zug in your family office to interview you. You are one of the most successful entrepreneurs in Switzerland. And with all your experience, I would love to ask you some questions as a young person who just started in the work world. Thank you very much, Natasha. Welcome here. Thank you. And uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. So I'm 20. I just finished my apprenticeship. And I would like to ask you, if you were my age, what would you do in our time? So first of all, I cannot answer that question for you because you have to follow your heart and your passion. Only things that you're passionate about, you'll be successful and performant in. Um, it's more about the attitude, uh, which, which is important. Um, today, I would still choose to become an entrepreneur and do my own thing and dare to think big, dare to believe that you can change the world, because only people that believe that they can change the world actually do. Um, so uh, dare to think big and dare to have the self-confidence to uh, grasp and attack uh, new things. Um, still, the first mistakes you can prevent by learning in your first job, but I would not do that uh, for Uh, too long time. So don't wait too long to become an entrepreneur. If you have the spirit to do so, um, uh, do the jump, but um, select your first, um, you know, place to learn on the job. And um, as, I, as I said to uh, the interview before, don't necessarily choose a company or a brand. Choose a purpose and a person that inspires you. Great. But what was your dream at the beginning? As I said, my dream would have been to go and study jazz and try to be a music star. Uh, I couldn't do that. Uh, I never gave up on my piano playing, but um, my other love was love for mathematics and physics and information technology, which was in very early stage at that time. So I just follow my other love. If I could not do music, I did math. And, uh, and I'm still fond of, I mean, uh, the weekend before last weekend, I was just um, listening to a four hour lecture on physics. Uh, I will not do anything with it, but <laughs> it, you know, the curiosity and the, 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 the interest and the passion about understanding, uh, you know, our world, the planet and our own existence still fascinates me. So just follow your heart. Yeah, and so what's your dream now? My dream now is, um, yeah, as I said before, the world offers tons of opportunities to make it better. And to have an impact on the world is, for me, uh, an inspiration, the best remuneration you can have. To, to leave a footprint that even if when you're gone, uh, somebody will remember, oh, this change, Francisco did it. Never alone, it's always a teamwork, but you know, somebody has to lead that change. Good. Second question. What's the most unexpected thing will happen in your career? I would have not expected, for example, the impact and the size of the financial crisis in 2009, 2008, 2009. Neither did I expect the reaction of society when COVID came. To be honest, there were tons of experts seeing that coming. And the next thing we can also see coming, I was visiting some meat production uh, in China and India, where you have holes of uh, chickens being grown. When they come out of the egg, they are being pumped full of antibiotics, which is the biggest source of creating antibiotic resistant bacteria and then you have the big ventilators pumping that air out into the air and we are slowly but surely getting rid of um, uh, resistant uh, uh, medicine against bacteria so <laughs> the next disease is around the corner the question is do we learn something out of covid and if you turn the wheel back and say hey we have 
we had the, the, uh, the uh, Schweine Grippe, the uh, swine flu, we had the bird flu, which was also a SARS type of uh, um, virus. So it was almost foreseeable that there will be a mutation uh, like COVID, but we didn't learn much out of this. We were not prepared. We didn't have masks, we didn't have tons of stuff. And, and we were surprised just because people are probably just thinking in two quarters instead of seeing, okay, what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these were big surprises and, um, uh, and unpredictable things. And um, yeah, actually, yeah. at least we should learn from similar things that happened before. Yeah. But you know, black swans, <laughs> cross our ways once in a time and then you need to be able to to improvise and to take the right actions by connecting the the brains and uh, and have an open discussion and 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 honest discussion yeah i'm fully agree with you what do you think about so the remote work and what will be the future for the remote work yeah um i think we should not now let the pendulum going too much in the other direction and say physical dialogue is now replaced. We found now the remote thing. I think there's nothing like human interaction. You, it can't be replaced completely by electronic means because right now all my senses are active. I can smell you, I can see you, I can hear your voice, I can hear and detect that you're a little bit nervous and all that stuff. I cannot do through a screen on a mobile phone, for example. So that all the senses are active in this in communication gives this communication another richness than doing it remotely. But doing everything like this, this interaction is expensive. Uh, you know, you had to travel here, I had to be here, you know, uh, etc. So it's expensive. If, we, if you were sitting in Singapore and I had to travel to Singapore, Uh, you know, the, the transaction and interaction costs are too high, so we have to combine now um, uh, both worlds and say what type of meetings can be done more efficiently or more economically efficiently remote and uh, what can only be done in human interaction. You cannot create a new trustful relationship with a human over a screen. I think this is impossible. I cannot hug you over the screen. Uh, so things like that remain irreplaceable. So it's the combination of, of both worlds to get the optimum. And what do you think about homeschooling and what will be the future of the school? Yes, uh, it, it's, 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 it's good that you uh, talk, talk on that topic. My last two educational um, uh, journeys were electronic. So today, You have even whole master's degrees um, uh, with universities uh, through the screen. This is possible. Uh, you can read, you can interact with people. You don't have to love these people. It's about you know, um, uh, uh, transferring knowledge. This can be done through electronic means very, very efficiently. You have a tremendous reach. Uh, so that is a very good use case. Education through screens is, 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 is very efficient because it's not about trusting somebody. It's, it's about getting your information and learn and have a dialogue. Uh, this is good. Uh, I, made this, I made the electronic experience with homeschooling with my eight-year-old daughter. There, I must say, it's much, much more difficult. Because if you have an eight-year-old child, child in front of you, you know, it's children still need all the senses when they interact with an adult. You have instant feedback and they want to have instant feedback. It's about an educational component, which you don't need when you make a university through the screen and you have two adults and you don't have to influence his, his or her behavior. With children, that is, a, is an additional dimension. So for children, it's difficult to do only ho homeschooling. Probably there again, a hybrid um, uh, model could work. So first you have the relationship between uh, the teacher and, and the child, and then the electronic part is a prolongation of, of that relationship that, that is working, but, but not purely electronic. With, with adults, you can make purely electronic education.
maybe some days in physical and some day online. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, if you were to, uh, <coughs> if you have one word to describe what's the entrepreneurship for you, what would it be? Mm, I cannot express it in one word, but let's say four or five. <laughs> Think big, so find a purpose you, you, you're passionate about, uh, a purpose that people, not yourself, because you also have to associate and get talents to move things, a purpose that attracts talent, purpose is important. Secondly, you have to think big. So don't start small, dare to think big and disruptive. Third thing, very important for an entrepreneur, ignore all the people that say it's impossible. The world can only be changed by people that think it is possible. Elon Musk said, we want to go to Mars. Unless there's a physical evidence that it's impossible, it's possible. The matter of fact that we were not there doesn't mean that it's not possible. If physics tell you that it's theoretically possible, it will be practically possible. So that type of ignore all the guys that say, oh, you're nuts, oh, it's risky, oh, it can be done, it can't be done. If you want, it will be done. And the fourth thing is hard work. Mike Tyson, in an interview, I heard, he said, uh, he was asked, how much of your success is talent? And he says, I don't believe in talent. (laughs) It's just hard work. So I don't think the talent doesn't matter because I, um, I could never be a basketball player. So I'm not good with balls and I'm not one meter 90 tall. So (laughs) there needs a little bit of talent. But my father always said it's 97% uh, or 3% inspiration or talent and 97% transpiration, which is blood, sweat and tears, hard work. So if you think with these four topics, you know, find a purpose where your passion is, think big, ignore the skepticism and work hard. These four, you're successful. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Last question, so if you have one advice to give to the young people as I am to start to, in the work life, what would it be? Don't put you first, yourself first. You put the purpose of your company first. You put the clients first. You put your team and your people first. And then you, if you try to optimize yourself, you will never get to the optimum. Right. Focus on creating value, on serving the other three stakeholders, and money will just happen to you or success will happen to you. If you think of your success, you're not optimizing. You believe you're optimizing, but you're not. Good. Thank you very much. (laughs) Do you have something to add? I wish you good luck and uh, strong will and uh, strong mind and go your way. Thank you. And if I can help you in any way, I'm open. You can call me. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you for this interview. I wish you you all luck too and all successful for all your business. Thank you. Natasha, bye-bye. In the Swisscom Ventures Deep Tech Nation Forum, We talk to some of Switzerland's most influential people in the high-tech sector. Together, we are shaping Switzerland's future.